Hello to the curious and welcome to this tutorial on creating a responsive React search bar component. Now we're containing all of this in Next.js, but essentially it's a React, Tailwind CSS and TypeScript component. We'll be using Next.js 13. So you've got use of the app directory here um, and some other bits and bobs. We've also deployed it on Vercel, which is what you're looking at right now. Uh, I'll show you how this uh, search component works. And this is essentially what it's going to look like. So if I was to type in hello world, uh, we get the results back. So this is a working search input component where we actually get the results back being used in another part of the site. So let's get coding and building. So the first thing we want to do is actually install the container for our component, and that'll be in Next.js. So the first thing we need to do is create the project. So we'll use uh, create next app. Uh, you can see we've uh, already had a go at creating a scuffed Google. So we'll create a scuffed Yahoo. I mean, we could have just called it Yahoo, to be honest. Uh, we do want to use TypeScript, ESLint, Tailwind CSS, source directory, uh, use the app router. Uh, would you like no? Okay. All right. Let's install. Okay. So that has installed. So let's CD into it. So scuff to Yahoo. All right. Now let's run the project. Cool. So we can see we've got our default Next.js project, uh, but we want to edit this. Uh, let's start getting rid of some of the stuff. So we've opened up the project. Uh, first thing we'll do is just delete this and type in scuffed Yahoo. Um, and then we'll leave this and we'll just say uh, search input component. And then we'll leave this as it is. Um, I want to go to source and page. And essentially all of this, we can just uh, delete. So get rid of all of that and we'll just put down uh, scuffed Yahoo. Right. And what we also want to do is create our component. So we'll go components search dot TSX. And then we want to create our index file. And we just want to export by default search component. And uh, the reason I do this is just for imports and e ease of importing. Uh, so when you go and search for any components in here, uh, it will just basically signpost uh, the default export from this index file. The TLDR is it basically I mean you don't have to type in search search when you import. That's it. Let's create our search component. So for now, we'll just put search here. And then we'll go to page and put in our search component and then we'll make sure to import it. Oh, it's already brought it in. Get rid of that image. Okay. Uh, I think that's enough for now. Let's have, go have a look. Yeah, brilliant. So that's all showing. That's all working and all connected. So within our search component, we want to start putting in the basics. So we'll add a little bit of styling here. So we want position relative uh, width full. And we want it to be a text color of gray inside. We want our input component. And then we want our button component. And within that, we want to just put um, a magnifying glass icon. So we'll just use an SVG. And we'll just add a little bit of styling to this input. So we want to add a background uh, white. Uh, want to add a height of 10, add about five uh, pixels on the X axis um, and make sure it's width full. Uh, we want to round the borders and we want to make the text small and then have a focus outline of uh, basically nothing right now. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, let's go have a look and see what that looks like. There we go. So right now we have a really basic input component, but as you can see, there's not much to it for right now. And if we inspect this, go to the console, uh, let's just get rid of these warnings. Uh, what is this? The resource. Uh, if you didn't know, you could get rid of warnings uh, by kind of typing in the, the start of them, or if they're errors or warnings, you can get rid of them. 
just cleans up the console for when we're looking. So let's go back. So we want to add a type to this input. So we want it to know what type it is. And we want it to be a search type. Uh, we want to give it a name as well. We'll give it a search name. And we'll also give it a placeholder. So we'll say enter search. Let's go have a look. So yeah, that's a, a little bit better. Yeah. So one of the key things uh, of uh, an input component is we want to get the value from the on change attribute. So on change, uh, we want to do something. So what we'll do is we'll create a search handler. Uh, and we'll take uh, an event parameter. And what we're saying is on change event, uh, we get that from React, by the way. So this change event that we get from React, we want to essentially grab the event from it, and then we're going to get the target value from that. So we're going to take event, and we're going to deconstruct the target property. And then what we're going to do is use state to put that value in. So we'll go up here and add our state for the component. Um, and we can see that what we've done here is we've added a, a default state which says enter search. So essentially, we can now use this in place of the placeholder. We replace that, and now that is connected to the placeholder. So when you refresh the page, that's the first thing uh, it remembers. Uh, its default state will be that, and then when it changes, it'll go back. Now you could always have it as enter search. So whenever someone deletes something, it could be there, but it's up to you. So down here, then we want to use set value to uh, target dot value. And that'll just go grab this target here. And on change, uh, we simply want to put that in there. So the search handler is going to grab the event. Um, and we don't need to do anything with that because it automatically grabs the event. Uh, one thing we do want to do is obviously make sure we console log value. Okay, so lovely quirks of the app directory. So we forgot to use use client. Now we have this, we've got the console open. Let's type hello world in and see what we get. So we're currently not getting anything right now. Let's delete this. Oh, there we go. There it is. So two exclamation marks, type some more. And there we go. So we're starting to get our results back. Okay, so that's all well and good having the value just being console logged, but we actually want to use it in this page component here. And the way we're going to do that is by actually creating uh, a prop that we can use in the page component to grab the value. Um, and I'll show you how that's going to work. If you want to use a type, so export type, uh, search props, and we want the prop to be called on search. Want it to be a string type, and it'll basically be a callback function. And we want to set this as the props, and then we just want to deconstruct it. So we'll say on search equals props. And what that does is it essentially deconstructs uh, the props component to go grab uh, on search. So we can use that without having to type in props.search, for example. Okay, so then we go down here and we simply type on key down on search, but we haven't actually set on search. So let's go set that now. So we've created a new handler called handle key down. And it's a keyboard event that checks to see if we've used the enter key. So if we've pressed the enter key whilst we're on the search input, it's going to submit the values um, and make them readily available and do like a callback to check what that value is currently in the input. So we can actually go down here and change that uh, prop we were using, uh, handle key down uh, to that. And because on search now, the prop uh, is actually being used here when putting the value into there. And we can check that with a console log. So if we console log um, value, get rid of that. Let's go to the page component here. 
Let's uh, change some of this styling. Change this uh, H1. Uh, make sure we add the on search prop. So to use this in the page component, we're just gonna need to add some state to handle the input value or the search value. Make sure we import a uh, use state and then we'll create a, a handler component. So we'll call it handle search uh, and we'll console log the value and we'll set the search value of the input here and then just pop this here. Uh, let's just refresh this. Ah, much better. So that's a lot more styled. Uh, we'll just change this to flex in line. In fact, we want it to always be flex in line. Cool. Uh, so we've got scuffed Yahoo here. Uh, test. And there we go. So when we type in a search and press enter, we now get our results. But we want the results actually output onto the page. So to do that, it's very easy. We already have our search value here. So we'll just add our H2. Um, and essentially we're sending uh, a text size here, adding some margin on the top and some margin on the sides. And then we're adding an underline and doing search for. So it'll look like this. So there's a little title. And then, and then what we'll do is we'll just add a place for the text to go. So we'll add a paragraph element and in here we'll put our search value and our class name text to Excel text to Excel. So that's all done. Let's go check it out. Brilliant. So we can see the results being input here and we can see we've got a dismiss icon here as well. So if we click the dismiss icon, refresh it uh, and let's have a look. So we can see our enter search placeholder. Um, and what we might do actually, I know we spoke about this earlier, but I think I prefer uh, placeholder value. We'll just set the placeholder value here to be enter search. And we'll set that here. And we will also set that here as well. So we'll always have that default set back because without it, you're just going to get an empty nothing. So, so now when we type something and then we delete it, it goes back to saying enter search. I think that just looks a lot better. But if we say uh, Yahoo and we search for that, we now get that in the search results. And if we change this and search again, we get that. Um, and then if we type some more, we get the next search result. So you can always play around, make it better, make it worse. Um, you could obviously search for one of the best YouTube channels out there for front end um, or not. But there we go. That's how you make a responsive React search input component. Um, if you enjoyed that, if you found that interesting, fun, um, make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next one.